Welcome to Grow My Etsy Shop podcast, the drips of knowledge you need to start growing. Hey, welcome. So let's talk the Super Bowl. Bigger than the Super Bowl. We, if you haven't heard, Etsy's going to be advertising during the Super Bowl. This is huge. There is more people watching the Super Bowl than any other television show in a year. That is the most congregated time that people are gathered around a television in the United States. So awesome. When it comes to you are, this is the, that 20 cents you pay per listing, that fee you pay every time someone buys and you're just ticked out of your mind because golly, someone's just taking my money. You're getting advertised on the Super Bowl. At least you're getting people to start coming into that funnel and then you can start winning them over. So you think of it as you're just in a giant mall and the mall is running a commercial on the Super Bowl. So people are going to come to that mall, hopefully, and that gives you more of an opportunity to drag people into your store. <laughs> Drag's an aggressive word, but you follow me. So the million dollar question we ask ourselves is, well, why the Super Bowl? You know, is it, what are they trying to accomplish? Is it just an awareness campaign? Is it just, do they just kind of say, well, we just, you know, it's kind of like Pepsi. Well, geez, everybody drinks Pepsi, so we'll just throw it up on the Super Bowl. No, this actually comes from a different spot. So Etsy actually only has about, well, this is an interesting statistic. It's like 30 something percent, maybe 35% or something like that of women in the last 12 months have said, yeah, I've shopped on Etsy. If you ask that question to men, it's about 10%. 79, so we'll just say 80%, 80% of shops are owned by women on Etsy, 20% are owned by men. The last statistic, which is kind of an important one, is if, well, there's actually two more things here. One is, if you asked men why they don't shop on Etsy, their answer kind of ballparks around the idea of, I don't believe Etsy offers what I'm looking for. If you ask men what's important to them when buying products, they say the same answers that women say when it comes to like shopping small, like, is that something you care about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shopping local. Yep. Supporting artists. Yep. Uh, More original, less big box. Yep, yep, yep. So they check the same boxes as women do when it comes to sort of the loyalty of appreciating more handmade things, more one of a kind things. So if you're the CEO, Josh is that guy's name, if you're the CEO and you got your board and you got your stuff and you're having your pre-pandemic slump that sort of is taking place and they're all coming together and saying, how do we solve this issue? One of the things you can do is to say, well, I believe we're leaving money on the table by not exposing ourselves in the correct light to men. How can we get men to shift their mindset and see more the value of Etsy? So step one is, we need to create our platform so that it's really straightforward that somebody who comes in who isn't familiar with Etsy, who hasn't walked through and jumped through the hoops before, can get in and immediately start to see the value of these handmade artists presenting their products to them. How do we do that? Somebody said, what if we do a gift mode and we can present it to men as, look, Come get these gifts. So I'm going to make, uh, I'm, and if this is right, I'm going to do a victory lap. Here's my guess of what I believe the Super Bowl commercial is going to be. I believe it is going to be something along the lines of people receiving gifts and those gifts being generic. So it's like, oh yeah, cool, yeah, no. Or maybe it's someone struggling to get past the generic gifts of the big boxes. And then they... Either A, someone receives a great gift and they're like, oh my gosh, where'd you get this? And they're like, oh, I got it on Etsy. Or the person ends up coming to Etsy for that solution of the gift and gets what they're looking for. And it's one of a kind and it's unique and the person loves it. I think they're really going to emphasize the person reaction of receiving the gift. And I think it's going to be a man who navigates his way through that. We'll see if I'm right. So I'm putting that. I'm putting that out here to see. This is what I believe that they're going to push. And if this is the direction, then everything is the dominoes are falling here. So essentially, what they're trying to accomplish is to say, look, if we make it so that we become this gift-oriented area for people, then people. And so the way this campaign will work is that you have the Super Bowl, which is your awareness campaign. They call it. So it's essentially just saying we're going to saturate the first message into people's minds, and the only thing they want to accomplish is one thing which is that they start to change their mentality to thinking, oh, I can get gifts on Etsy. That's a good idea. 
Next time I'm looking for a gift, I'm, I'm going to jump on there. That's all they're going to try to accomplish. And then from there, they're going to run ads throughout the year that are going to be much more targeted and geared towards calls to action. Come take action. Come take action. Come do this. Because it's kind of the realtor style of marketing where a realtor, not everybody needs a realtor every day. And so you can't just be like, you know, fill out a form to get your house up for sale. It's like, dude, I don't want to sell my house. So how does a realtor market? Well, they have to be front of mind. The idea of that is either when someone's ready to make a decision, they say, hey, I'm going to use this realtor or when they start their research phase or they're starting to look for a realtor and you show up amongst the crowd of what they're searching for. Let's just say they're on Google and they start clicking around and they go, oh, I've seen this girl before. Like that recognition that is is really important when you're trying to make a decision that's a bunch of nobodies and all of a sudden you know somebody. Etsy's going to be doing something similar. They're doing an awareness campaign. They know not everyone's going to stop watching the Super Bowl and jump on Etsy that day and start going to gift shopping. Now, there's going to be people, people who do. I do think we're all going to see a boost in our traffic that day because of the Super Bowl ad. However, I think most of the growth that we're going to see is people who are dr- dripping in throughout the next couple months as Etsy continues this campaign and continues to push this forward with this idea of we're gift-oriented. And I think that this is a great move. For Etsy, it's a great move, especially because if you if you really think about it, like how do we gear towards men? Like, what do we do? The answer is, what if we can tell them that they can get gifts on this platform that are really unique and creative, and that other people are going to love? Like, that's a great way to start introducing more of that. You know, like I said before, if ten percent of men are shopping on Etsy, we need to get that to twenty to thirty percent. It's going to really boost our revenue of shop owners if we can get more men coming into the platform this way. So. I'm all about it. I think it's great. I think it's a great use of their strategy and all that kind of stuff. So now the million dollar question is, what do we need to do? What do we need to do to prepare for this? What are some things? So as I said before, there is going to be a boost. I guarantee we're going to see more traffic coming in that day and maybe the days to follow that are just coming from pure, hey, I forgot about Etsy. Oh, I didn't know about Etsy. Oh, Etsy's got this new thing. I want to check that out kind of stuff. When it comes to gift mode and where a lot of people might be kind of hanging out. Now, if you've messed around with it, you can see it's not perfect. So I'm a little concerned about that. It's, it's the, you know, if you do some experimenting and kind of click around, you'd be like, oh, well, (laughs) this isn't exactly what, (laughs) anyway. But the number one thing that needs to be recognized, and this is a a perfect example. I remember one time working with someone who was, their, their niche was pet dog stuff. And I always teach that we're always putting who our product's for in our titles, using the word for. And they were like, you know, what am I supposed to say for golden retriever? And I was like, sure, you could totally say that. But you can also say for dog lover. And they were like, what? Dog lover? Who's searching dog lover? I was saying it's not by what they're searching. It's how the algorithm is placing the searching behavior. So when someone's searching for dog things, they need to, anyway, if you go into gift mode right now, You will see one of the options is dog lover, that exact word. Two points for Jared. Let me share with you what we don't want to do because sometimes we can look at gift mode and say, okay, I want to be found under gift mode, so let me keyword pad up my gift mode. So I was actually going through someone's shop yesterday. This was literally the keywords that they had written out. So they have what their product is. I'm not going to say what their product is, but they have what their product is. No, listen to this. Birthday gift for daughter from mom and dad, birthday gift for mom, for sister-in-law, for best friend, gift for adult women. (laughs) If you have one, she literally has three words that describe the product and then she spends the rest of the time listing out that it could be a gift for a daughter from a mom and dad or just a birthday gift for a mom, for a sister-in-law, for a best friend, for an adult woman. Whoa, 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 whoa. If you have a product, and I think most of us do, that it can gear towards a specific person, and if you look at it and say, yeah, mine's a great gift idea, then you use a listing to target a person. Let me say that again. You use a listing to target a person. So in this scenario, she should be saying, this listing is going to go towards the sister-in-law, and we're going to write it so that it gears towards a sister-in-law. Not a mother and a daughter and a son and an uncle and an aunt Betsy. 
just a system model. And then you duplicate and you do it again and you duplicate and you do it again and you duplicate and you do it again. Now I teach, I like to switch out front pictures. Sometimes I use my second picture for my front picture just to make it so that my store has some variety. It doesn't look like you have the same listing over and over and over again, but you're essentially tackling these keywords. Now, do you have to get as deep as breaking down every single type of individual that would ever walk the face of the earth? No, you can kind of have usually two to three. This could go towards and the best, best thing you can do is make the listing pictures speak to that person. So if yours is a gift form like what she kind of wrote, which was like this mom going to a daughter type thing, then that's the way you structure it. Because if you're talking to the mom who's giving this to their daughter, you have to think about what the mom cares about. Well, the mom wants to make sure that their daughter loves it, that their daughter feels appreciated, that this is something their daughter is going to use. So in your listings, you're going to talk to the mom about how much their daughter is going to love it and use it and appreciate it and feel loved so that she says, yes, that's exactly what I want. Keep in mind, when we buy gifts, we don't buy gifts of things we like. That would make us a terrible gift giver. <laughs> we buy things, gifts for how the other person is going to react. And so if we can fulfill that of like, yes, that's, they're going to love that, this listing is doing a good job telling me they're going to love this. I'm all in. This is a great way to use the gift mode to your advantage. Another thing that's worth looking at is if you have a product that's, let's just say you make something that is um, glass. And so you make, let's say you're, uh, yeah, you make these glass bowls or whatnot. If you can find a way to say, well, this glass bowl, I want to put anniversary happy sixth anniversary on it. You've just made a glass bowl into a gift. Does that make sense? Now, glass bowl is a weird example, but you're following me here. If you are someone who creates something and can easily put on it, happy anniversary, love you so much, <laughs> you've just made a, a, you just went right into a, an area, an anniversary thing. And now guess what happens every month? Anniversaries. You can take something that was originally just a product, like a glass bowl, and make it an anniversary gift. And so now you're not only being found under glass bowl searches, but you're also being found under anniversary gift searches. So again, do we go in there and write anniversary gift and all of our stuff and don't talk about, no, no, no. We keep talking about the glass bowl. We keep sharing what this is, but we start to introduce that it's for anniversary, for anniversary. This is for our anniversary, for anniversary. And you have on there anniversary. Now, if you take something like your glass bowl, and you just write in the titles and in your SEO for anniversary, the likelihood of someone taking advantage of that for an anniversary is strange. <laughs> you know, I'm searching for anniversary gifts and there's all these custom made things and this, you know, hand carved pocket knife that's happy birthday, happy anniversary hubby and all this kind of stuff. And then you get just like a glass bowl. People are going to scroll past you really quick. You're not going to stop. And, and when Etsy does their small boost to see if people are going to like you and no one clicks, they kick you to the back of the bus and you don't get a second chance with that listing. So you want to make sure that the listing itself is geared towards anniversary, that the product itself is geared towards anniversary. But what I'm saying is, is you can engrave on something, happy anniversary, and suddenly it becomes an anniversary gift. You can get into the bridal shower niche, which what's nice about this niche is that a lot of times people buy in bulk. Hey, I want to get this for my whole party. I want to get this for my whole, you know, what are they called when they're all, <laughs> I can't think of what they're called. You know what I mean? I want to get it for the, uh, all these people. I want to get it for party favors when people leave, whatever it may be. You can kind of fall into that niche, which can help with bulk orders and whatnot. And also I think that targeting corporate gifts, I have a lot of people who make products that get reached out to on Etsy that say, hey, I want to, I, can you make this for corporate gifts? And especially at the end of the year, um, when it comes to Christmas time, if people are looking for those employee appreciations. So I think employee appreciations and corporate gifts are another great keywords that you can start to put stuff, especially if you have the ability to make it in bulk and whatnot. So this is today's episode. I want you to go ahead and just start looking at your listings Start looking at gift mode. We know for the next couple months, this is something that Etsy is going to be promoting. And just like anything, it's the easiest way to get on the train is when it's new and Etsy's looking to promote this platform a lot. So let's take advantage of it. So who are you targeting? Who are these products? Can we switch any products over to gift by making simple text changes on what we're doing? Make sure your listing pictures match who it is that's looking at the picture so that they can get the vibe of what they're trying to accomplish, which is to give a great gift to somebody. Okay, enjoy the Super Bowl. See you guys.